If you live in a part of the world that has a proper four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter, then you already know that the hardest time of the year to ride is in the winter. Now, depending on how you look at that, that could be a real drag or it could be a great opportunity to stay fit and to get ahead of the competition. But in order to do that, you're gonna need some secrets to the trade. That's why we're here today. So to keep your wheels turning, because the winter weather can really destroy your bike if you're not mindful, Without further ado, let's jump into 10 ways to look after your bike this winter. Okay, so first things first, you've heard it before, but you need to get some reinforced, heavy duty, wide as you can go tires on your machine. Now, the wider the better, because the rubber that's on the ground is gonna make a big contact patch with the ground. It's also gonna help with uh, traction, and it's gonna help reduce punctures, and you do not want to get a puncture in the middle of winter, trust me. It's also gonna slow you down, and that's gonna be great, because with the colder winter temperatures and the sweat and the wind going through you, you don't really wanna be going fast. If you remember, last year, Ted King and I went out and did a fat bike ride. And some things that we both said that we could immediately tell was that one, by riding in the woods, and B, by going slowly on those big fat bikes, we we're able to easily keep our body temperature up and stay warm. So another thing on tires, if you live in some really wild weather conditions, like the northern parts of Europe or Alaska or something like that, and you're gonna be seeing a lot of snow and ice, consider getting a pair of studded tires. All right, so something else to consider is to run a sturdier chain in cassette. You don't wanna go with the super light race stuff that you use in the local hill climb series in the middle of the summer. The light stuff is traditionally more fragile. For the winter, think rain, water, salted roads as being your norm. And if you ride gravel, well then you're gonna have dirt and sand and all that jazz. And it's gonna end up wearing out your chain, your cassette, your wheels, your tires. Basically, it's gonna ruin things day in and day out. It's gonna wreak havoc on your components, so being able to have some heavier duty stuff that has a longer lifespan would be my suggestion. Okay, now you've got to grease everything in the winter. Headset, bottom brackets, seat posts, through axles, pedal bodies, even the little bolts. All of this is gonna get tons of dirt and salt and water on it consistently, and it's gonna dry your stuff out, and it's gonna create tons of creaking and other problems. So keep your stuff greased up to properly avoid it getting seized up, potentially broken bolts, or worse, yeah, something failing while you're riding. All right. Now, fenders. We've all heard about fenders or mud guards like I've got here on my Pinarello, but they are essential in the winter time. They're of course gonna keep you and the people that you're riding with clean of debris that are coming off of your tires, but they'll also help you keep your bike a lot cleaner by keeping all of the mud and muck off of your drivetrain and off of your frame for the most part. Now, if you watch yourself doing a bike ride in wet conditions, then you'll see that everything that comes up off the road goes pretty much directly onto your frame set. And it's basically like streaming water into your bottom bracket in the moving parts pretty much for the entire time that you're riding. So if you get a good pair of fenders, you'll be able to keep the water from going constantly into places like the bottom bracket. Think of it like a river coming off of here, but just going right down onto the ground. All that stuff that comes up off the tires is gonna go onto the fender and is gonna go onto the ground. So I can't emphasize enough how important fenders are for winter riding. In fact, I'll go as far as to say they're essential. Another way that you can look after your bike in the winter time is also a good way to look after yourself, and that's to have a reliable, consistently charged up pair of lights. Now, when the daytime light is running out so quickly in the winter, having a good pair of lights is absolutely essential. Now, I know this is a little bit off topic about how to keep your bike in tip top shape, but you're not gonna be able to do any riding if you run into someone out on the dark roads, or worse, someone were to hit you. So a good pair of lights is absolutely essential in the winter time. So one tip that I always do is I leave my cleaning kit outside my garage door with the hose set up ready to go. When I come back from my ride, I just do a quick once over with the hose, spray off all the additional muck and grime, and then I'll pull out something like this muck off cleaner, and I'll just hit the bike real quick with that. I finish it off by wiping everything down to make sure that it's dry, put some lube on the chain so that it's ready to go for the next day. 
I also think it's important to emphasize that you don't have to meticulously clean the bike after every single ride in the winter. Now, if you listen to the earlier part of this video where I was saying use some heavier duty componentry, this is the reason why. I think it's important to get the bike cleaned up and functioning at a good level, but then maybe once per week, I'd say get a meticulous deep clean with a proper degreasing of all the components and stuff like that to keep the bike going all winter long. All right, so this one deserves its own number these days. Make sure that your bike is properly dried off before you throw it in your shed or your garage. Wiping it down with a rag or blowing it out with some compressed air or spray it off with some muck off bike protect to help dispel some of the water. If you need to bring your bike indoors for a few hours to make sure that it's dried properly, do it. It's gonna make a world of difference when it comes to the longevity of your components and your entire machine. All right, now let's talk about brakes. If you're running traditional caliper brakes, then getting a pair of cold weather or wet weather pads is going to help a lot. They're gonna do better in sloppy conditions, and that would be my recommendation for the winter. Also, cleaning the cables or using a sealed system if it's really wet conditions that you're riding in. Like I said before, just make sure that you dry your bike out properly after washing it. There's nothing worse than storing a bike in the cold and then coming out after you've washed it to find out that the cables are totally frozen solid. Now, if you're using a bike with hydraulic disc brakes, which some of you will be, hydraulic disc brakes are not gonna have those problems and replacing cables and stuff like that, it's not gonna happen. And the same goes for electronic shifting. However, for disc brake users, you will want to invest in some sintered pads. Sintered pads are also known as metallic pads that have flecks of metal and a different compound in them gonna help against those wet, sandy, and gross conditions that you typically ride in in the winter. That's versus organic pads, which tend to have a softer feel and do better in the warmer, nicer climate. So definitely go with some sintered pads if you're using disc brakes. Another thing that you can do when you're going through your bike is to pull your cranks. Now, if you hear a lot of creaking in the bottom bracket area, that could mean that you have a lot of grit and sand built up down there. This goes back to earlier when I was talking about using fenders on your bike. If you're not using fenders, then you're gonna have that direct stream of water and sand and grit going right into the bottom bracket and crank area, which is gonna lead to the creaking and nasty sounds that you might hear coming off of a winter bike. You're also gonna be doing a lot of damage on the bearings, so you're gonna be doing double nasty duty. It's a mess. So again, I'd recommend getting a good pair of fenders that are gonna keep the water from going directly into that bottom triangle of the frame set and the bottom bracket and all that. As a weekly gesture, when you're doing that deep cleaning of the bike, I'd also recommend that you pull the cranks off at that time. We've got tons of tech videos on this over on the tech channel, so go check those out. Okay, so another big theme that I like to go through for winter riding is get the super light carbon fiber race gear off of your bike for the winter time. Or consider just getting a dedicated winter bike altogether and leave your race bike as is. By using something like an aluminum wheel with a thicker tire on it and that heavier, more solid drivetrain, cog set brake pads, all of these things are gonna lead to a heavier bike, but it's also gonna be a bike that will do much better against the brutal winter conditions. All right, so those are some tips to look after your bike in the winter time. A little bit of TLC will go a long way. Five minutes of washing your bike a day, putting the bike somewhere dry after you're done with that, and really looking at what your bike needs to be able to keep moving without being obsessed with it is gonna help you keep going in the winter time. So these tips are gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and keep you safer when you're out there riding during the winter. Let us know down in the comments if we missed anything, if there's a particular tip that you think makes you get ahead in the winter time, leave that for us down below in the comment section. Be safe out there, dress warm, and thank you all so much for watching.